And now, the Bridge North Pod with Dan Bradley and John Garbutt. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Bridge North Pod. In this edition we'll be talking to Chris Neal about the recent takeover at Bridge North Town Football Club. We'll also be talking to Trevor Paget from Bridge North Scouts, Sainsbury's Charity of the Year, about their upcoming fundraising efforts. And we'll be talking to Richard Booker from Don't Touch the Walls, who played last year's Bridge North Music and Arts Festival. We'll be talking to them about their new EP, which is to be released in the spring. And we've got an exclusive first play of one of the tracks from this upcoming new EP, so check it out at the end of this edition of the Bridge North Pod. Contact the studio, join the discussion, tweet us at Bridge North Pod, or visit us at thebridgenorthpod.co.uk. So now we're talking to Chris Neal of Bridge North Town Football Club about their recent takeover. Chris, what does this takeover mean for Bridge North Football Club and its members? Um, basically, we've had some Olympic legacy funding from the Sports England Inspired Facilities Fund. Marple, but it just means that their facilities are going to get improved, disabled access, the function room is going to be really revamped, 35,000 is going on that, and have some bands in there, hopefully birthday parties, christenings, things like that, really. I mean, it is a members club, but I'm trying to generate new members by giving people sort of a month's trial, see if they like the place. Uh, Chris, up until recently you ran the Bear in Bridge North. Um, do you feel your prior experience stands you in good stand for your new role at Bridge North FC? Yeah, I mean, the team's manager, Mark Clyde, and committee member Steve Broom, who's a teacher at the Indard, came to me and asked me basically to do the same as what I've done at the Bear up at the football club. And then um, it's just a new challenge. I feel I've gone and as much as I could at the pub, the Bear, and that'll just carry on now with the staff that are there, and so I can try and do something else at the road. Would you say that this is a, a difficult challenge for you? Definitely, yeah, because it's got a bit of a stigma attached to it being a club. But, I mean, £5 to join, and you're there then, you can come to the games at anything you want to do, family events. And um, I just think it gets a really good atmosphere in there. Um, Chris, um, with this recent takeover, do you have any events planned there for the near future, or any big plans at all? Yeah, well, I've got a different band on every Saturday. I've got Cooper and Davis this week, and then the Swinner Towns the following week. We've just had an inset booker uh, the weekend gone, and that was as busy as I've seen it up there. Um, I'm planning a music festival on the May Bank holiday. Would you say that this venue will become um, quite a support to the local music scene? Definitely. We've got a, the um, music festival committee a meeting there and try and get us involved because having the pitch and the Crown Meadow outside is probably the biggest venue in Hightown. Chris, do you have anything to mention uh, from the Bridgenworth Football Club at all? Just that the team's doing really well. It would be great if more local people could get behind them because it's all local lads. The kids, the Spartans teams and the Bridgenworth Town teams are heavily involved. And obviously, it's about the future of sport, it's improving you know, sport on a professional level, starting with the kids. And it would be great to see more people getting involved with that. Do you know what the attendance is like for home games? So obviously, it's quite heavily weather-dependent, but it, I've seen it up to 200, probably, for league games. Maybe as low as 80 or 90, when it's been snowing or raining. Are there any upcoming games that people can head along to watch? They're, no, they're away for the next couple of weeks. I think they're home at the end of the month. Like I say, they're fourth in the league, so there's a very good chance they'll go up. And if they do go up, they need quite a lot of money for travel expenses. They go into the National League then, so um, all the support they get can be uh, will be really appreciated. Thanks for talking to us, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Community events. So now we're talking to Trevor Paget from Bridgenall Scouts. Trevor, what can we look forward to this weekend? Well, this weekend, uh, in conjunction with Sainsbury's, who incidentally... Uh, elected us as their local charity of the year last May. Um, And since then, we've been running various uh, fundraising activities. On Saturday, there is a sale of unwanted Christmas presents. And these are to be sold in the form of a a tombola between 10 and 4 on Saturday. Would you say there's quite a lot of unwanted Christmas presents? Well, to be honest, I don't know how many there are, but... Uh, Sainsbury's tell me they've got a good collection. So, uh, yes, I think it's doing all right. Uh, what kind of fundraising events have you held in the past? Well, during, since May, when we were elected as their local charity, uh, we've done two bag packs. Uh, we've done a tea, coffee and cakes uh, day where we were providing refreshments in the Sainsbury's foyer. We've done a book sale. 
and a bring and buy sale. So far, we've raised something like £3,000. But one of the other reasons we're uh, collaborating with uh, Sainsbury's is to try to raise the awareness of scouting in Bridge North uh, in the hope that we'll get some volunteer adults coming along to help us run the group. And we are desperate for more leaders so that we can open additional beaver, cub and scout groups. Would you say without the um, leaders stepping forward um, that a lot of these children on the waiting list might not even get a chance to be a part of the Bridgenal Scouts? Most definitely. Uh, the, there are actually about 60 youngsters on the list for beavers, but only about 25 of them are currently old enough to become a beaver. Many of those 25 will be too old for beavers by the time they get to the top of the list which is a great shame because Beavers is a great introduction to scouting. And once we've got a beaver, uh, there's a very good chance we can keep them right through until scouts. What kind of activities do the original scouts do? I think uh, people might be interested to know. Beavers do a lot of uh, badge work following set routines um, and programmes of learning. We do a lot of camping in scouts. Uh, the group... Uh, in Bridge North, hold uh, a camp involving all the beavers, cubs and scouts, together with a good few parents. And last year we had 250 on camp. So you certainly need a lot of volunteers to help pull this kind of, kind of thing off, definitely. Well, well yes, we didn't, do need a lot of volunteers, we've, but we've probably only got about 20, maybe 25, um, and only 15 of those are actually warranted leaders who are doing the training necessary to learn how to do the job properly. Training is given free of charge. And we have the philosophy that scouting should cost you nothing but time. So any equipment needed, the, the group will pay. Any training needed, the county pays, in fact. So how can people get in touch and get involved if they want to become a leader or just a volunteer? They're always welcome to contact me. Uh, and my number is 01746. 767037. They can find uh, details about us on the web. Um, I'm not particularly into the web, so I can't tell you how to find us, but anybody who understands the web will be able to find us. And um, they're welcome to come along to the Scout Hut just off Love Lane behind the Leisure Centre, Monday to, th to Thursday, uh, when there'll be somebody there who can point them in the right direction. Thank you for talking to us, Trevor. Um, if people are interested in taking part in the Tombola at the weekend, uh, when and what time does it start exactly? Uh, it's starting, I believe, at 10 o'clock, but possibly they're going to set up earlier than that. Is that on Saturday or Sunday? Not, that's on Saturday, this coming Saturday, in the foyer at uh, Bridge North Sainsbury's, and it'll go on until about 4 o'clock, or until they win, uh, run out of the unwanted presents. Brilliant. Thank you very much for talking to us, Trevor. Thanks a lot, Trevor. You're very welcome. Live music. So now we're talking to Richard Booker from Don't Touch the Walls on the Bridge North Pod. So, Richard, where did the name come from? So our name uh, comes from being students in Birmingham in a very filthy house and one of our very dirty housemates contributing to the mess. So basically in that house, you didn't want to touch anything. You had to wear shoes in the kitchen. So the name comes from not wanting to touch anything, and we thought, don't touch the floor sounds better than don't touch the floors. And what kind of music uh, do you guys perform? So the band's been through quite a few changes in the, in the, in the last few years, really. But we sort of settled on um, a modern folky style, given our instruments at the moment. Um, so the instruments we have at the moment are uh, violin, trumpet, harp, um, cajon, and... Um, piano and, and guitar so we've settled on this modern folk style that we're really happy with at the moment um, and that's where we're going from here you're actually quite a talented bunch of musicians knowing how to play all those instruments well i'm very lucky to be surrounded by these guys who are who are who are the talented ones really i just sort of write a few songs and shout shout at people mainly and uh holly on holly on piano and vocals is a is a talented one really she uh she's very good at shouting at people as well but <laughs> But so, uh, she, she's allowed to. So you're like the Hollywood director of the band. Well, yeah, uh, yeah she she probably directs the music, and I probably direct the uh, logistics. We'll put it that way. Uh, where where are you all from, and where did the uh, band sort of start out? Sort of met in Birmingham.
Birmingham. Holly and I were students, and we met in first year uh, of uni in uh, in halls. And then we've basically picked up people along the way, mostly all from Birmingham. Um, we've gone through a few a few drummers and a few bassists in our time. But um, at the moment, we're all, all friends, um, which is really nice, and we all hang out together instead of practising. Uh, which sometimes isn't the, the isn't the best strategy. As I said, we're all friends, and it, and it really works well at the moment. What have you been up to um, since well, you the, since the festival season of last year? Yeah, in terms of gigging, we haven't done so much because um, violinist Millie is a Spanish student, and she's been off in northern Spain for the year. Um, and Adele, our uh, cajon player, has been in uh, Thailand and Africa for the best part of the year. So we haven't done too much gigging, but we have spent the time recording basically. And I think one of the tracks you guys are going to play is from our new EP. So we basically spent the time learning how to record things ourselves um, and and getting those tracks down uh, when, when you guys get the chance to gig what sort of venues do you tend to play well we've played pretty much every venue there is to play in birmingham um we've been down to london a couple of times we've played in polish clubs we played in pubs um we tried to you know we tried to play in quirky venues um obviously playing at bridge north last year was great we played at arts fest in birmingham on, on one of the main stages in front of lots and lots of people which is pretty exciting um, one of our favourite venues is in Birmingham has got to be the Island Bar, um, as well as the Yardbird in town, which is a sort of a well-renowned jazz club. You know, we're trying we're trying to get festivals booked for the summer and and move on to you know playing in more quirky venues that we really enjoy. Uh, Richard, as a performer, uh, where did you start out? Um, you know, were, were you always involved in Don't Fish Wars? Was that your first big project, or? You know, did you well, have... I mean, I'd have to say my, my first big, big project was being the, the innkeeper in the, my uh, in reception, um, and I had a solo song, <coughs> which was uh, my first big role, really. And then I was Pinocchio in year three, um, <laughs> and then it went on from there, really. But no, in terms of the music, um, sort of rekindled my love of music um, in sixth form at school. But Don't Touch the Walls was pretty much the first band um, I've been in. Um, and the first band that a lot of the guys have been in, really. You know, Dan, who plays the trumpet, has been in a lot of bands, but the rest of us are really pretty new to it. So Don't Just Awards is pretty much my first love, and I can't really imagine doing anything else. Do you get nervous before you play a gig? It depends where it is and what it is. Um, I think everyone gets nervous, and I think if you start not, not getting nervous, it means you're not caring about your performance. Um, you know, the big, the big gigs, we get pretty nervous and almost cry before. But uh, I think the, the more nervous you are, the better, the better the time you have on stage, really. I mean, it gets easier as you play, but yeah, you are always nervous before you go on because, you know, something could happen that's, that's, that's untoward. But, you know, we, we, we've had our fair share of technical faults over the years and uh, we, we seem to get through it okay. Did you get nervous before you played Pinocchio in year three? <laughs> yeah, horrendously <laughs> nervous, yeah. Uh, the, 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 uh, the fairy, the, the fairy, no, Jiminy Cricket, she made a... She made an epic mess up, and I had to reuse one of my noses twice on, on, one, of, on one of the nights, which was a which was a bit of a uh, bit of a nightmare. But I improvised well, I think. I guess that got you all prepared for for all the technical hitches that you'd experience on there. Exactly. exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah, learning starts young. Yeah. Do you guys have any bizarre warm up routine before you go on stage? Because I noticed um, before certainly before the festival gig, um, you guys were like putting on a mini show before before the actual gig started. Yeah, um, <laughs> our warm up routine. We, we we try to look after our voices um, and try to you know warm up before we go on because that means that we're 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 ready to go as soon as we go on stage. Um, but yeah, I mean, our warm-up routines consist of doing lots of harmonies and lots of uh, scales, generally in the car sometimes, in my beautiful Ford Escort estate, um, which is falling to bits. But yeah, I mean, Bridge North was a bit different because we, we, we did some a cappella harmonies to warm up, which hopefully brought a few people in. Um, and we try to be a little bit quirky you know, in pretty much every respect because it makes, it makes everything a bit more exciting. So you guys recently announced uh, on your website of a new EP that you guys are mm. writing. Um, could you tell us a bit more about it and where the inspiration for it all came from? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, because our previous EP that we released, that was, that was sort of our previous band, which is a bit more rocky. Um, and although the band name's the same and the songs are pretty much the same, we've re- reworked them and sort of folked them up a little bit. We're still, we're still interested in this sort of wall of sound um, effect that we had going on in the previous EP, crossing that over with a bit of rock and... You know, hitting people with massive harmonies and Florence and the Machine-esque sort of epic sounds and the piano and the harp and all the interaction of all the different instruments. Now, the EP is going to be sort of a pre-release to our album, uh, which is going to be called The Creation of Noah. The, the inspiration for that comes from some of our friends who 
um, managed to get pregnant um, and create a son called Noah, who's the most beautiful baby boy ever. Um, and he's lovely, and they're lovely too. So the, the album's really dedicated to them. But the inspiration for the music comes from you know, various, various walks of life. You've uh, given us permission to play an exclusive preview of a track from, mm. your, new, from your new EP, The Creation of Noah. Um, would you like to introduce that now? Yeah, this is a song called In the Distance that has never been heard by anyone um, outside of our immediate family. I hope everyone enjoys it and uh, give us some feedback. Um, head over to our Facebook page, which is Don't Touch the Walls. Uh, so facebook.com forward slash Don't Touch the Walls. Um, you can find some more information on Don't Touch the Walls dot com. Um, you can download our previous EP for free and explore the explore the website to find my hidden comedy gems, um, which which aren't so funny. You might get an insight into our into our way of thinking, which is completely wacky. And um, we won't hear the full EP until spring, I believe. Uh, spring twenty thirteen is that when you're releasing? Um, it's going to be out a little bit sooner than that. Uh, well, I suppose March is spring, isn't it? Um, but early March, uh, we're looking to release the EP, and then in the summer, we're going to follow up with the album. The Bridge North Pod with Dan Bradley and John Garbett.
So we'd like to thank you for listening to this edition of the Bridge North Pod. We'd like to thank Chris Neal for talking to us about the takeover at Bridge North FC. We'd also like to thank Trevor Padgett for talking to us from Bridge North Scouts about their fundraising efforts. And finally, we'd like to thank Richard Booker from Don't Touch the Walls for talking to us. And if you've got something that you'd like the Bridge North Pod to cover, don't forget to email lois at thebridgenorthpod.co.uk and we'll get back to you. For the Bridge North Pod, I've been John Garbett. And I've been Dan Bradley. Thank you for listening.